We have vote review from Killjoy on Bind sent by Clarabella. Let's see what's happening here. We're going to do defense first. Um, we have a composition of Ray's Reina. Deadlock! Omen. Oh my god. All right, so if I would have to like think about the composition, you're going to have problems on attack, not on defense. Defense should be fine. Remember to always communicate with your other sentinel to not play with you, right? All right. Let's see. So, uh, the, the the setup that you have right now with the turret on the box here, I feel like I, I personally very dislike uh, this this setup. But I guess it's fine for a pistol round when the opponents have harder time to destroy the turret. I'm gonna explain it, but after seeing your full your order setups on 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 B. I personally dislike the turrets that are for contact like this because they don't really give you much a lot of inter information. Also, that's fantastic right now. Play. All right. So. Let's talk about it. When when you play in ranked, uh, you have to like specifically when you play Cipher, Deadlock, um, Killjoy, Chamber as well. You need to pay attention. Um, you didn't pay. Uh, you need to pay attention to uh, your opponent's composition, right? Because the thing is, they have a KO and a race, right? They have a KO and a raise. And because of that, you died while not being able to do anything, right? Because one, your position got cleared by by one, uh, just one uh, grenade. And then KO covers entirely your B-side position and you get tagged, right? So you need to learn from that. We'll see if you're gonna, if you're gonna learn to your position was not correct, right? Also, if you are in a position like this, right? I feel like right here, you know that they not jumped on site. You have one second to activate your shit, right? I feel like playing safe, just hiding in the tube and just hoping for the best might have been a better better opportunity because you can still pop your nanosomes in the moment, right? And just panic, like try shooting when they are pushing into the tube. Like just that one second would activate the turret as well which then makes it problematic for the opponents right it's i know it's hard to make like split decision make split decisions like this in a heat of the battle but it is something to consider for the future right and now look when you you place the turret the same way right but if you stand in this position your turret doesn't do anything because you have a faster contact than the turret you see what i mean like, you're the first contact. No one else. And the turret Hello. only works for B-Long. Right? Yeah, the turret is also for B-Long, but the thing is that... Um, uh, uh, okay, uh, after seeing the full full buy setup, I'll, I'll speak about how I personally play Kildra on, on B. And how I feel like it's... it's didn't record my mic. That's unfortunate. Up, up, heaven. This is like um, I feel like every time I do voter views, I have to speak about this kind of like peaks. You know, pay attention to how you move. One stop. Right. You you cleared here, correct? Like your movement here to clear the first corner was correct. Look. From here, you're gonna swing without making a step. Right. Your cross placement is too low. By the way. That's one thing. Your cross placement is definitely too low because when you swing, shit, you swing, you didn't make a sound, which is good, so you know how to do it, right? But your cross placement is way too low. Because this is the head, most likely. So you need to you need to make your cross placement a little bit higher, right? But now, when you clear this this first corner, you swing swung out. This corner, you checked the lazy, right? By just shifting into it. And now, look how you changed this corner. You just shift 
with incorrect cross replacement again at the same level, right? At the chest level. And you also just shift out slowly, which gives this guy an advantage, right? So you need to clear all of those corners the same way that you did the first one, right? So you try to just strafe fully on full speed without shift, right? You don't want to use the shift. You just do the sidestep without making noise, right? Something that you did before. Because right here, like, you adjusted well for his headshot level. But the thing is, he had every advantage. And you still dealt 100 damage to him. So if you had your, your advantages, you probably kill him, right? You have a higher chance at least at killing him. Last player stay Always flanking. All right, so you do the same setup. The line up is coming from first because the molly uh, this way. All right, so let's break it down. Why I dislike this those kind of setups? At least you stand in a different position to not get affected by the paint shells and the and the uh, and the uh, dagger, which is nice, right? But the thing is, this setup is something that I heavily dislike. So. I'll make a comparison to Ascent Killjoys. For example, when you play a, a, a players uh, when 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 you play against the Killjoys on Ascent, typically they use the turret on the boxes on B main, right? I will show you. Oh, this is Ascent. So typically they send out the turret here, and that is, I think, the least useful turret, but yet you see it the most often. The reason for that is that it's for like someone just peeking out b-main typically you will have that info anyway right that turret gets destroyed and you lose your one of your most valuable assets on guarding a a site right so typically i personally prefer to have turrets that are more like baits right so for example for bind when you play bind and you put the turret over here this is a turret that gets easily cleared because people swinging, like people who who clear hookah will just kill the turret and you gain nothing. You just get information other than hookah, which you probably already have because they use utility to clear hookah, right? And if someone peeks belong, they're like, oh, there's a turret that is not even shooting me because this turret is not shooting at the players at long. If it's set up incorrectly, if it's too far back, it's not going to shoot the players on long. And even if it's such shooting, you can just instantly clear it. And again, you don't have any info, right? Because you used a piece of utility too early. My comparison would be if a Sova arrow is being used to check for information on long B, where it could have been saved for when people do an execute and you use a Sova arrow here to kill the players that are jumping on site. So when I play Killjoy on on uh, on defense, I typically tend to put my turret in positions that are not easily cleared, right? So for example, one of my favorite turrets is here. When it's put on the most left side side of the box, right? So it plays on contact of hookah when someone already jumps out. See this? This turret only activates when someone already jumps out or is in this corner on the garden, right? Right here. So you can play with it because you can either play in this position, right? And now you have easy like swings of contact or like even put a nanoswarm over here that you activate, right? When the turret starts shooting and then you can swing and kill this person, right? Like all of that stuff. You can have a nanoswarm over here and it, you can pop this nano swarm once the turret starts shooting, right? The same can be achieved with a with a turret here, which is even more annoying to deal with as an opponent because this activates even in a tighter um, angle, right? And only someone who is standing like this can try to clear the turret by shooting through the wall, which is not reliable. And again, this is so annoying to deal with, right? Because you have you, you have to swing out or use utility to destroy this turret. Something that you don't want to do. Remember when I when I do um, like vote reviews or when I play my, my own games, I always put micro objectives, micro objectives on, on the round. Destroy the sage wall. Destroy the killjoy turret. 
destroy camera from cipher right destroy the trap from chamber all of those micro objectives are giving you or deny the map control for the opponents right so you try to do that every round and if for example the uh, let's go back to the ascent like i cannot do that if the killjoy puts a turret for example here like how do you clear the turret from um from killjoy if the turret is on elbow sorry on on lane like how do you how do you you have to peek out you have to do an execute to clear the turret right so then you, you are denied one of the micro objectives because now the killjoy has permanent control of b and she knows exactly where to swing because she can stand for example here right and when this when this gets fucking popped when it, the turret gets activated she pops the nano swarm swings out and gets a kill right or plays from ct here or plays from market like you have so many options and you have to like so aggressively peek out to activate this turret or destroy it and to answer your question uh turret in elbow is not really a good idea because when you put it in elbow like this that this is getting smoked off so this turret doesn't get any value right so i also like putting turrets for example um in weird positions like this this gets activated when they're already on site it's hard to deal with because you're swinging out and you're worried about so many positions and this is currently here right another my favorite um favorite spot is doing a alarm bot that activates when people plant like here right? but to finish finish my train of thoughts so for example if i put my turret over here then i put one nano swarm for the activation of the turret and then i put this here and this here because now i know right and then i either play on backside if there's no race right if there's a race i'm playing in tube if there's a ko you're fucked because you don't have many options and that's one problem if i would be playing against a ko i would play on a not on b because on b there's almost no way of escaping it so you have to either learn how to shoot it which is not fucking easy right but if i would be playing against ko i would be playing on a not on b because it's so hard to avoid but my point is right now with this setup when this turret activates and i see it shoots at window when i activate this nano swarm and well there's a lot of pressure those people are getting tagged by the nano swarm and by the turret at the same time because they had to commit and jump out for this turret to be activated and if people want to push out of garden the alarm bot activates and i pop this nano swarm and if they do it for the to destroy the turret because they swing like this not only they swing into the turret so maybe they will get a little bit of damage from this but also the alarm bot activates at them at the same time and this nano swarm starts damaging with a double right so this is like a this is like a very very efficient way of setting up your defense um on on b right then and, and one thing i wanted to show you one of my favorite favorite uh, like alarm bots on b side is this one here i put it here again not reliable when you play against a race right but i put it here so it activates when someone starts planting and then i just have an endosome over here right sorry can't remember there was an option of putting it on the fucking latch here unless they change it i don't know i didn't play for a long time with killjoy anyway my point is you can just put it somewhere here like close like even like this oh here we go right doesn't really matter that much but you can easily get a kill when this alarm bot activates because people <laughs> people never predict that shit right so when they start planting you activate the nano swarm and they're dead and you cannot like easily destroy this nano swarm, this alarm bot otherwise can you show me a setup on a i don't have one that uh, that's why i dislike playing a yeah we'll do it in a moment actually we can do it already so if I would be playing on A, on the Killjoy, I would say that you can uh, you can uh, have the same kind of a principle, right? So for example, you can put a turret on the box here. Right? So this gets activated when people commit to the site, right? 
it still uses lamp. So when people commit to lamps, it starts shooting at them right here, right? You can put it a little bit more to the to the left, I guess. Like this. This is like the maximum to the left, right? So when people go into lamps, they get shot at and this doesn't get obscured by smokes. So if you play for lamps, for example, like if you play here, you get the info when someone pops into lamps and you can easily kill this person because it get he gets like tagged by the turret as well, right? When he stands here. Um, and then for showers, you can do this. It's kind of the same logic, right? Like you can do it like this and you can then play maybe even like this, like here, right? So you can play for contact on the short, then hide, then you... Then you have showers control. Someone else plays like lamps. You're not playing B. Uh, you're sorry. You're not playing A alone. Like you can reliably play from triple or from backside over here with your full control, right? And if someone is pushing showers, like you have easy informations about that as well because you have the double setup. Like it's pretty hard to go through because one, the players that are pushing A will have to clear through it, and if someone is pushing for showers, you can activate those two, right? Uh, then putting one nanosorm to deny the plant is also a good idea. So uh, I would say that's one of my things. Like on A, I would say that it's less, impor less important to play on uh, like on informations from your Alamo bots because you're gonna you're gonna have to be l relying more on you taking gunfights because the space is more open. In B, when you play. Like, it's easy to play off your utility because they have to go through the two choke points. But on A, that's not the case, right? Because there's one choke point on, on showers, but this is not a choke point because they would just easily go through it, right? So that's one of the setups I would probably play. And then other one, you can try like maybe like this, to it over here, right? Because that requires people to go out of this and clear this corner. And when that happens... You can set up a trap, right? So you put the alarm bot to activate after they swing. So this is actually too, this is actually too too close. Look, when people swing from here, they have to be in this position right here, right? So I'll put the alarm bot like this, so they don't see it like earlier, right? Because if they see it earlier and they just destroy, it, then it's useless, right? Remember about that. So it can be even put maybe a little bit here. Right? And then you can play from lamps because you have like a better understanding of how to hold short and someone else holds uh, showers. I don't think it's efficient enough for you to hold both at the same time with culture utility. So like do more traps set up like this. On A, you have to be more confident on you taking gunfights uh, and just trying to go one for zero or two for one. You can't really play safe like on B, right? But I would play only A on Killjoy, if uh, my opponent would be having a, a KO. Uh, Just remember that in general, putting your your Killjoy turret as a contact play is very inefficient. Right here, they already crossed to orb, and your turret didn't start shooting. Right? You see, what that's exactly what I explained before. Yeah, thanks, thank you. Over. Mm, don't rotate. Yeah, don't rotate. I like this uh, decision. Just stay. But the thing is, now... You, you, you see what I explained before? Like, you were holding it yourself? Right? Because your turret is an unreliable contact play. See? They were all showers. Nice. Nice, good control. Spike down A. Nice, I like that. One pushing CT. Placing alarm bot. Turret destroyed. One enemy remaining. City left. Lamps now. I don't mind the alarm about that you put there, but I think it puts you into into unnecessary risk. Activate the nanosorms now. Nice. I like that. She should be damaged a little bit. 
We have a spike, bro. We have a spike. Yeah, yeah, we have spike. Yeah. spike. Good job. <laughs> um, that alarm board that you put in put you in a little bit of a spot where you could have been swung. If that sage was like fast, she could have killed you when you were putting that alarm board. In those cases, uh, the alarm board doesn't really help you, right? But it puts you in danger. You should. Like, this is not a nano swarm. It doesn't, like, act like, doesn't help you get the kill, if you know what I mean. It's more of a tool to play on, uh, like, you know, you play off its contact on something, but you, you cannot play off its contact. So the, the, the fight will most likely be decided already after the alarm bot is gonna trigger, right? Think about it this way. Sometimes it doesn't matter what utility you have. Just fucking shoot. And now we have deadlock. Dude, the, your Reyna is such a moron, it's incomprehensible. But it's the same shit as fucking Immortal Free, no difference. It's all the same shit, as you can see. Nice one. Yeah, go back, go back. That look offset. Yeah, but this is why I don't like playing on B, see? Like, you play on, on elbow because you adjusted the KO, but you play in a position where you get smoked off and you can't really do shit. Right? Yeah. This is why if I play against yeah. KO, you adjusted to the KO, but this is why I don't play Kirja on B if I play KO. Because I, I, there's no spot for me to play. Maybe once right? Maybe you could play aggressive on long, but then you don't play Kirja correctly. Right? 30 seconds left. I'll give you smoke for Uka. Spike planted. W one piece of advice. When you shoot the sage wall, do it in two times. You don't want to put out the entire clip of a vandal while shooting it because you can get caught. Right? So when you start shooting this... When you start shooting this... Do it till like 7 to 10 bullets, reload, again shoot it, and then you're always ready to fight. Because the worst thing that can happen is that guy is literally behind that wall, right? You shoot it to zero, he hears the reload sound, and he swings you and kills you, right? So do it in two times. Like, it's much safer, it doesn't cost you a lot of time. Kill with the judge, with the. Just... Okay, you're changing your setup. Um. Well, you're not exactly changing your setup. Yeah. So that turret on on that turret on uh on the B side is not activating on long. I don't think you realized it. Like it's too low to activate on long, so it's only for hookah. And now we have both alarmabot and. Turret or for hookah. Okay. Right. Nice one, go back, go back. You will not kill my allies. You will not kill my allies. Shower, shower. Your shower, yeah. KO is the shot. KO shot, yeah. I don't mind you trading. I, don't, I like the fact that he didn't recall your shit because... Oh, never mind. So I wanted to say that I, I like the fact that he didn't recall because it's a 4v5. You're going to help the players on A side and they're going to most likely rotate if they're going to gonna be met with a lot of opposition. So your your stuff will be probably helpful still when they go back to B. How is it possible... That at this rank, this is like what a diamond, Clara. The opponents have a fucking smoker who understands how to smoke, and I don't get those at the mortal three. Flat. Okay. Yeah, uh, this is awful. Oh, this is awful. This is an awful habit. Why are you going for this? <laughs> right? Look, you literally die because you 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 got baited like in a fucking battle royale. Oh, a gun. Ooh. Oh, it's shiny. And you would have been ready to fight this, this sage. You know? You would have been ready to fight this sage. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> 
It's such a small difference between losing and, and winning a round, right? Uh, you still won the round, but not because of you, right? Holy <laughs> Alright, so you, re re you go back to the old setup. Uh, I don't know if you communicate, but tell the fucking deadlock to fuck off from your B side. Like, if you play B, tell her to play A, because you should never, you absolutely should never fucking ever combine the utility on, on, on sentinels of both sides and ranked. Unless, unless you are like 100% certain they're going into that side, that round. Swing a little bit more, because you cannot help. Ah, no, 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 no. Good job. All right, so... I, I dislike what you did with the utility. Because, look, okay, so... It's a correct smoke for Spike, by the way. I'm very surprised, right? He holds it. Look look, how, look at your position right now, right? You're holding this, this, like, smoke very, very inactive. And now, when you swing out, right... You're using your utility for no reason. Right? Using your utility for no reason here. Like, you put yourself in danger. So, your correct, your correct decision nice, would nice. be, right now, when the utility activates, you put it for showers. Before you swing out of the smoke to help the diffuser. Right? Like, helping short with the turret here doesn't help. Because the omen, look, the omen is already swinging out. You should be either with him, helping him out, right? Or you should be guarding this in case someone swings out. Or you should be guarding showers. But putting the turret over here is not an objective. Putting the turret on the, over there is not an objective. And remember, you would achieve the same thing with this turret, by the way, right? You would achieve the same thing with this turret if you just put it on the top of the box here. And then you don't expose yourself to short. Remember that as well, nice. right? But good for you that you actually realize about the Phoenix. So that's good. I'm a kill Jermaine. This is actually helpful to watch. You can rewatch some of the VOD reviews I already did. They're on my YouTube channel. I did several of Killjoys already. Fall back, fall back, Rena. See, this is like how, how, how useful that turret is. Oh, it shot someone in a hookah. But you already knew that someone in a hookah because you used a phoenix flash. Right? So, you're never gonna benefit. Yeah, come back, come back. Oh, now, now you have seen the KO dagger being used. That means you could reposition to side for 40 seconds. Right? And fucking Deadlock is still playing with you on fucking B side. Like, that's incredible, man. The amount of brain cells can be divided by zero here. Spike planted. One enemy remaining. Wolf one. Nice. Nice. Nice one, nice one, nice one. Evan, Evan, Evan. Let's bro, put. Bro, 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 dead lock, dead lock. What the fuck? Oh, the... Bro, sorry, I, I swear I didn't. Oh my god. <laughs> And the deadlock got so scared in his voice. I'm like, oh no, oh no, he's gonna throw my game now. Oh no, oh no. Keep doing what you do. That's so funny, man. Oh, fuck me. You play aggro now. But okay, so you play aggro towards B long, right? Let's see how you do that. Because you still put up your old setup. So if you play aggro like this. Why not adjust your setup, right? Let's 
let's make an exercise. I want to play aggressive for uh, B orb control. And I want to do it alone, so... I don't want to put the old setup because it doesn't help me anyway, right? So when the barrier drops... Wait, let me recall this shit. I will just put the turret over here, right? So it grabs the right side of it and then pick up, right? Because that gives me early info if someone is swinging out a fountain over here, right? And then if, if I get the uh, no informations... I try to take it as much from the left side as possible, right? And then I can do this. Right? And I can leave the alarm board for long. Then I can put nano swarms over here. Maybe I should have put down it even earlier, right? And then when my Kildred turret is, uh, is going back, I can put it in this corner. Play myself for long as well. And play on the contact of an armor bot. And then I am like, this is actually now efficient setup as well. Because this turret is activating when someone drops out of hookah, right? And I can play off the contact of an armor bot because why on earth would there be an alarm bot over here, right? So your your opponents will not be looking for, like, they're not going to look at this, right? Typically. So you can also think about doing an uh, another swarm over here as well, right? So you reinforce your position because you gained a little bit of map control by taking this orb and getting this th those, like... Um, those visuals here, right? Oh, and Deadlock were not the ones throwing the game? Oh yeah, I see the, what Reyna is doing. Reyna is doing typical Reyna stuff. Turret in front of the orb? The problem with the turret in front of the orb is that it, it activates too late. You know? Oh, uh, Lamp's dead. Reloading. Can you smoke it? I think it's short. Can you smoke it? Oh god! Oh the cardinal sin of sentinel players. Right? You die because you think about the utility. That's the only angle that wasn't cleared. And and by the way, you're the one responsible for clearing that angle. No one else, because you see that three of the players from your team are going through sight, right? You're the only one going through, through lamps. So you have a task, and that task is to check all the corners. So let me explain what I mean. Because this will happen a lot when you play bind. One of your players will go here, and you will go here, and they will not fucking tr like uh, they will not fucking trade you and shit, right? So you're alone. So you you have angles that you need to clear. And by the way, if you want to um, wait, let me change to your to to show you something. One of the most useful things that you can do on bind when retaking a is spamming a wall that typically people stand at. So look at this. You can shoot through this. And you can kill a person who is standing here. Just by shooting this. So you can remember the location of the wall, like this V here. V like Valarante, right? And when someone stands here, you can just position yourself like this. Or when you go out here, yeah, you can also like when you go when you go out here. This is probably easier to to line up like this. But the angle's a little bit angled, so I'm not sure if I like this. So I would probably just stand out right here, like in a in a straight line, because this is easier to shoot at. Right? Like this. And you can clear your first angle over here by just shooting this. Right? In this V. When you stand on the first tile. Like this. So you shoot it here, then you can swing, then you can swing, 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 cut the pie, right? Cut the pie, cut the pie, cut the pie, cut the pie. Like, you go slowly check all the corners. Clearing hookah is incredibly fucking tedious. And it's, uh, sorry, clearing lamps is incredibly tedious and super fucking risky. Right? So, that's one of the things that you can help yourself oh with. Oh
stupid, he's stupid, he's stupid. Oh no. Bomb grenade. Bring your best. That looks still playing with you. Yeah, sorry. Spike down, B. Oh, that, that, that almond smoke, man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> giving me the creeps. If we get a bind map, I'll play Killjoy for you to see how would I play, okay? It's all of them long. Uh, long. Go wait, I'm behind them, I'm behind them. I have my ult and the rotation. This dissipates in 3, 2... Nice! One enemy remaining. Nice, guys, we played. One of the very, very, let's say... I wouldn't say high level, but like more experienced things that you will learn in this game or you should learn is to have an internal clock to tell you when are the smokes going away right like one of the things that will help you is looking at the timer the moment the smokes appear for you to understand so maybe you can just not fucking even count it like i never look at the timer anymore because my internal clock like it should be pretty decent at like recognizing where the, when the smokes will be disappearing remember the duration it's uh, 19 and a half seconds for uh, brimstone smokes and 15 seconds for the rest. And it's like between 14 and 15, depending on the hole, but you typically can count just 15, right? You have smokes, you have. Nice, I like that. Put it on the top of the box, top of the box, top of the box. Top of the box. Why not top of the box? Right? It's so much more efficient if you put it on the top of the box. Clear. And also, like, it would actually activate on people, like, because right now, people would have to swing out, and they will not even swing out because they're gonna shoot it like this. Right? So putting it on top of the box here, it would be much better. Huff, it's huff. Huff, huff. One enemy remaining. One oh... Yeah, I wanted to say that. The so, to give you an idea why I was uh, going, uh, the Brimstone uh, Molly deals 56 or 58 damage per second. Defusing, defusing the spike. This guy is dead as well now. Uh, defusing the spike takes three and a half second if it's if it's halved, right? So unless, unless you have already one second, like more than the molly has, you can't get it. Right? It's incredibly, an incredible, incredible fast damage. Yeah. Joke's over. By the way, if you know that you're gonna play from elbow, right? If you know you're gonna play from elbow, consider swapping to Phantom because you're gonna be playing from the smoke and you can just shoot through the smoke because of it, right? Remember that. Uh destroying one box is good enough. And remember what I said about the reload. Right now, someone can kill you. Hello, Porridge. Ah, uh, nice try. Nice try. Like, just missed by a fucking millimeter, man. Unlucky. Like, this is one of the rare occasions where crouching is the good habit, by the way. Because, look, you cannot you cannot go out. You cannot go ADAD because of the slow. You're out in the open, right? So, 
crouching here would be the correct decision. Maybe could help you out a little bit. But Clara, what is your sensitivity? Can you tell me what is sensitivity and, and uh, DPI? Last round in the half. 1600 DPI and 018 in game. Really? So you have lower sensitivity than me. It doesn't look like it. Interesting. It's like very snappy. We get one arena. Oh, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Taylor! Thank you very much, Taylor. I got one card. What the hell? Uh, no but, uh, Brahma's ulti. Take care. Keep it, keep it, keep it. It's life of a killjoy. But you should probably not... You should probably not rotate because you had an advantage, right? So... Let's pay attention to it. Let's see what happens. You start rotating when it's 5v3. For, like right now, look. Right now, it's 4v3. Right? It's 5v5. 5v3. 5v3 right now. And you lose one player. 4v3. In this case, I would stop rotating. Right? Not recall your shit. Stop rotating. Stay on B. Right now. Specifically also, you know why they rotate? Because your Reyna goes... And she TPs to A. That means that the players from A side now heard... Oh, it's a TP. All right, one more. One less defender on fucking B. And one more defender on fucking A. All right, go B. And now because of that, you're in bad spot. Because your Reyna fucked you over. Right? So when you play bind... You have to pay attention to that little shit. Spike planted. Alright. So, you took the risk, which is not terrible, but maybe you shouldn't have it. Right? Maybe you shouldn't have taken the risk. So, how to do this without taking the risk? Ah, oh, I'm fucking Yoru. Wait. Mm -mm -mm. So what are my options? Because you are also so, so low on HP. What are my options when it comes to, like, not putting myself in danger, but helping myself, right? One thing, putting it like this, I know it only gives you info here, but it's, like, at least you're not gonna get killed, right? And... What you can also do, if you want the information from Hookah, you can rotate. Remember always that you can rotate this shit. So you can put it like this. Right? Even though it looks at you right here, it still gives the information about this. See? Right here. It will still see this here. But you never put yourself in danger. Right? But what you did is you put yourself in danger because you put it here. But not only that, you also make it a little bit more awkward for you to get out of it because you cannot go through the fucking turret, right? But again, it, it's more about like... When did the rotation happen and why did the rotation happen, right? Understanding that is more important. When you play bind, you have to, like, play around your teammates more than the opponents. Because your opponents TPing from A to B or from B to A will typically fucking uh, make the opponents rotate more than anything else that happens in the game. Alright, Clara, I hope you learned. Uh, specifically, I think the biggest learning uh, from this vote view would be... The turret placement. Because the turret placement was not really helpful for you. Right? And how to play against KO and considering like changing weapons 
because of that as well. Thank you for sending.